This innocent looking image file is not actually an image and if you clicked on it, your PC will be hacked because it will run a malicious executable file as you can see in the properties. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to create a file that looks like an image but functions as a backdoor, basically a trojan. Please keep in mind that this video is for educational purposes only. That's why you should be using virtual machines to practice what you will learn today. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel as well as my personal channel in which I upload cool videos similar to this one. And by the way, if you would like to practice what you will learn today on the cloud, then check out today's video sponsor, Linode. Linode is a powerful and easy to use cloud provider. They are actually giving you guys, our followers, a hundred dollars free credit if you sign up with the links below. So you can use this free money to create machines on the cloud that will always be on and always be connected to the internet. And you can use that to do so many things such as hosting your own web applications, your own files, and much, much more. We previously covered hosting your own VPN service with Linode, and we also covered cracking WPA networks literally in seconds using their powerful GPUs. And like I said, use the link in the description below to get a hundred dollars free credit with Linode. Thank you again, Linode, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so first let's go to google.com and search for Discord Rat. Click on this link for GitHub Discord Rat 2.0. So this is the tool that we will be using to generate the backdoor. It uses a Discord server to communicate with the target instead of the typical remote access Trojan or Rat. So when the user clicks on that executable Trojan, it will automatically create a session on the Discord server and the attacker would then send the commands to the target computer using that Discord server. And here we can see some of the commands that we are able to execute on the target computer, such as sending shell commands, downloading and uploading files, and so many other cool commands that we will take a look at later. And we can download this tool by going to the setup guide section and click on this link to download the pre-compiled files. And in here, all we need to download is the release.zip file. To make things clear, this tool can be detected as a virus on Windows operating systems because the builder has a code that builds the payload which gets detected by the AV or the antivirus program installed on Windows by default. Even though Windows thinks that this tool is a virus, this tool doesn't actually contain any malicious code inside it. I have checked and verified the source code of the tool and you can do that as well from GitHub. And as always, please test this in a lab controlled environment, meaning that you can use a Windows virtual machine and download the tool and test it on that Windows virtual machine itself. Now don't forget to turn off the virtual machines real time protection. So I'll click on it to download it. And here is the file. Let's unzip it. So I'll right click it and hit extract all and it will give us the release folder. Now you need to create a discord bot for this to work and we can do that by using the discord developers page which is at discord.com forward slash developers forward slash applications. Make sure you are already signed in into discord by the way. Once you are here click on new applications to create a new bot. Name it whatever you want accept the terms and conditions and click on create. Next, click on the bot settings, scroll down to the privileged gateway intents and let's check all of these three settings in here. One, two and three. Scroll down a bit and in the bot permissions section, select administrator to give the bot an admin access. Save the changes. Next, click on the OAuth2 setting in here and click on URL generator. In the scope section, select applications.commands as well as bot and select administrator in the bot permissions as well. Let's scroll a bit down and let's copy this URL as we will need it later. Next, we will need to create a new server in Discord. And to do that, let's open a new tab and let's leave the developers tab open for now. And in this tab, let's go to discord.com and in here, click on the green cross to create a new server, create my own for me and my friends. Let's give it a name. I'll keep mine as is and I will hit on create. And now we have a server. 
Next, let's open a new tab and let's paste in the URL or the link that we copied from the developers page. Once again, this link. In here, select the server that you just created and click on continue. Make sure administrator is selected and hit on authorize. And awesome, the bot has been added to the server. Let's go back here. And last thing, let's go to the user settings down in here and go to advanced and make sure that you have developers mode enabled. Now the bot and the server are ready to go. Let's actually build the Trojan using the tool that we downloaded. So back to the release folder, we see three items. The item that we are interested in is the builder.exe. So let's double click that and it will first ask for the bot token and the guild ID. Guilds are basically Discord servers and guild ID is a unique server identifier in case you didn't know. Now to get the bot token, let's go back to the developers page. Let's click on the bot settings, then click on the reset token to generate a new token for us. And yes, let's do it. And let's copy that new token and paste it in here. Now we need the gold ID. To get the gold ID, let's go back to Discord, right click the Discord server that you created and click on copy server ID and paste it in the gold ID section. And once we click on build, it will create that executable for us and save it in the current working directory, which is in this location. Let's click on OK. And here is the executable file that we just generated. Now we can manually modify the looks of this file and make it look like a PDF or an image. And hackers will need to be creative on how to get the victim to click and run this executable file. And there are so many ways to do that. But in our case, for this video, let's make this executable file look like an image. To make this work, we will need three main things. The executable file, an image, and an icon of the image. Let me first copy paste the client built file to my desktop. So now I have the executable file and the image that I want to use. And you can download and use any image that you like. So I'm only missing the icon of this image. And to get the icon, let's go to this website, icoconvert.com, to convert my image into an icon. And you can also use whatever website you're comfortable with to convert the image into an icon. So in here, I'll select the image that I want to use. In my case, it's in the desktop. It's called m3.jpg. I'll open it. Click on upload, scroll a bit down to step five and click on convert ICO and download it. So here I have the icon file. I'll move it to my desktop as well. All right. So here I have the icon file, the backdoor executable file and the image that I'm going to use. I'm actually going to rename these files to make it easier to read. Cool. Now we are ready to move on. Let me select both the JPEG image and the executable file. Right click them and go to WinRAR and add to archive. In case you don't have WinRAR installed, you can simply install it from Google. It's very simple to do. So here I will make some changes. So make sure you are following along. I will first mark the create SFX archive and I will change the archive name as well. I'm going to call it M3. You can call it whatever you want as well. Let's click on advanced click on sfx options we have nothing to change in the general tab so let's go to the setup tab and in here under the run after extraction let's first type in the image file name which is m3.jpg which is this file hit enter then write the executable file name which is backdoor exe so when a victim clicks on our file it will first open up the image the m3.jpg image and then it will run the backdoor executable file which is the backdoor.exe let's go to the modes tab and select unpack to temporary folder and under silent mode i will select hide all next let's go to the text and icon tab and in here we can select the icon file so from the last line the load sfx icon from the file i will hit on browse to select the icon that i want to use and this is the icon that we just converted so i'll select that and open it next let's go to update and select extract and update files and overwrite all files and that's it click on ok and ok again and as you can see, it generated a new executable file for us with the correct icon. The last thing we need to change here is kind of a trick to the file extension name. Because right now it's saying .exe. 
which is obvious that it's an executable file. So to do this trick, we will use the RTLO character, which is the character that shifts the text from right to left in Windows. Let me show you what I mean. So from the startup menu, let me search for character map. And here we have it. Select advanced view. And in the Unicode box, I will type in 202E. And you'll see that it has identified it as the right to left overwrite character. Then we just hit select and copy. And it's now in the clipboard. Once you copied the character, let's head back to the new file that we generated right click it and edit the name i'll move the cursor right before the dot and since i want the extension to say dot jpg i will type that from right to left which would be gpj and then i will move the cursor back before the g character just like that and finally we just need to paste the rtlo character that we just copied so i'll do Control v and perfect now we have an executable file that looks just like an image. Now you can even be more creative with the naming in this scenario. But in our case, I'm just showing you how this is done. So it's not the most creative file name out there I know. So now we are ready to send this file to the target machine. And for this video, since it's for educational purposes only, and since I am using virtual machines, I can simply copy this file and I will come here. So this Windows machine will act as the target machine and I will simply paste in the file. This is also one of the reasons why you should be using virtual machines to test this tool as well. So let's pretend that I am now the victim and I was convinced by the hacker to open up this image. So I would normally double click it and we will see a normal image of a Ethereum 3. Nothing suspicious, right? Well, no, because in the background, once we clicked on that image, the hacker have full control over this device. Let's go back to Discord. We will see a new session opened in Discord in here. Let's click on that channel and we can execute the commands from here. To list all of the available commands, we can do explanation mark and then help. Hit enter and here are all of the available commands. We can run shell commands by using explanation mark shell followed by the command. So let's do that. I will do explanation mark shell. Who am I? And this is the result of the command. This is the user who's logged in currently. Another shell command is shell system info. And now we know the complete specs of this computer. We can also download and upload files. So let's try downloading this text file, for example, passwords.txt. So I will do explanation mark download followed by the location of that file, which is in C users user desktop passwords.txt and here is the file i just snatched it from the target machine how cool is that we can also turn on the webcam of the target machine and get live pictures so first i will list the available webcams by doing explanation mark get cams all right looks like we got two cams i will select the second one just to test it out so i'll do explanation mark select cam and number two and to take a picture using that webcam, I will do explanation mark webcam PIC or pick. And there you go. Just like that, we just hacked the webcam of the target. And finally, I will end it with a notification message. So I will do explanation mark message and I will just say you've been hacked. No need for grammar mistakes. Let's switch back to the victim machine. And yep, here we can see the message. As you can see, it's a notification message saying you've been hacked. So that's cool. So we can pretty much control anything with this computer now, just because the target user clicked on that file. And what is even more special about this tool is that we can make this Trojan persistent by running the startup command. So even if the target machine restarted the whole system, we will still be able to have an active session with them. Now to secure yourself from these types of attacks, first I recommend you to turn on file extensions in Windows because it's off by default. And in this case, mine is unchecked. So make sure it's unchecked as well. Click on apply and OK, and you'll be able to see the file extension at the end of each file. Now, this will not completely protect you from this types of attacks, but it will at least help you do that. Also, make sure you go to the properties of the file that you will be running. In this case, in this Trojan, as you can see, it will say an application.exe, even though the file extension says .jpg. Also, having a well known antivirus program installed on your PC can tremendously help detect and prevent the execution of Trojans. It's also crucial to keep your system updated 
as many updates contain security patches inside them so it will install with the updates as well and most importantly you should not be downloading and opening any suspicious file you see online it doesn't matter how friendly they look on the outside it might contain malicious code embedded inside that file i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you did please let us know by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for future videos like this one.